Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this week's video is all about secrets of Disney. I really enjoyed doing my facts about Mickey, so I'm just going to do some facts that you might not know about Disney in general. So let's talk Disney. secret that I'm going to talk about. I actually didn't know about until this past trip to Disney and that is that at Magic Kingdom 15 minutes before the park actually opens they do this whole welcoming show and it's really awesome. They're singing. Mickey arrives on the train with a special family so it's really awesome and I highly encourage that you see it. Another thing many people don't know is that if you stay after the park closes they do what is called the kiss goodnight and the castle lights up and there's a little spiel from Jiminy Cricket and it's really awesome so I recommend that you guys see that. Another thing a lot of people don't know is that PhotoPass photographers will actually take your picture with your own camera so even if you don't have the photo pass where you have it and you just want the memories on your phone you can hand them your phone or camera and they will actually take pictures for you so that's definitely really helpful and it keeps you from paying really high prices for the pictures and they're pretty decent pictures because even iPhones take pretty good photos and they obviously know what they're doing and they're usually more than happy to help this next one has to do with getting your pictures with the castle. A lot of people like their pictures taken in front of the castle. I got my picture taken in front of the castle, but you can actually get a picture from behind the castle and it is just as memorable. It's still beautiful and it's very unique, so definitely a lot less crowded back there. So I actually have a list of some things that you can do that a lot of people don't know you can do at Disney that isn't what you would typically expect. So. At Typhoon Lagoon they actually offer surfing lessons. I think that's pretty awesome because I've always wanted to surf but sharks kind of scare me so I feel like learning in the wave pool might actually be better. I'm not sure if that's exactly where they do it but that's kind of what I'm assuming from this. Um, also Typhoon Lagoon has sharks in Shark Reef so you can swim with sharks in Shark Reef so that's pretty interesting. Uh, you can learn how to ride a horse at Tricircle D Ranch. That's also really awesome and something you wouldn't typically think when you think Disney World. And if you're an aspiring Imagineer, you can have lunch with one. And I actually did know about that, but I haven't done it. I'm sure it's probably expensive, so not something I'd probably end up doing, but you never know. Um, future race car drivers can hit up Epcot's test track. That's interesting. And... Um, get a great view of the park from a hot air balloon above Disney Springs. That one actually sounds really fun and I'd really like to do that one. And you can actually get a haircut from the Harmony Barber shop, so that's pretty awesome too. Another secret of Disney that many people might actually know at this point is that Disney, when originally building Disney World, made it so, as far as Magic Kingdom goes, all of the lands are very, very separate. So when you are in Adventureland, you're not going to see anything from Frontierland because they've designed it so everything is very cut off, if that makes sense. So the theming is very much in that exact park and this kind of goes with cast members. Because of the utilitors underneath, most cast members come in their regular clothes and check in at costuming, change their clothes, and if they have to travel to a different land, they will use the utilidors underneath of the park versus just someone dressed up in Tomorrowland attire walking through Frontierland because obviously that would throw off the theming. So they specifically made it so each mood to each theme is very true. Another cool thing that I didn't know is that there are small pipes above, well, in the utilidors that hang above the ceiling. I'm pretty sure that's where they're located. And they actually shoot trash at 60 miles per hour. So that's definitely an effective and interesting way to get rid of waste. Another one that many people might not know, but I actually tried on my last trip, and it does work. If there are two lines, pick the one to the left. 
because most people are right-handed, so they'll most likely opt for the line on the right, making the side on the left shorter and quicker. There are over 20,000 different shades of different colors all around Walt Disney World, and that is pretty crazy to think about. Another interesting fact slash secret is that you cannot purchase gum in Disney. So for me, I made sure I brought a lot of gum, especially when riding airplanes. I like to chew gum when we're descending so my ears don't pop. So that helps me. So I knew to bring gum because once you are in Disney, you cannot buy it. Obviously you still can chew it. They're not going to like yell at you for chewing gum. But in order to keep, you know, the park clean and keep from everybody just sticking gum everywhere, they just don't sell it. So if you were to do a load of laundry, so washing and drying for every single day for 44 years, that is how much laundry costuming goes through in one day. So that's, I mean, you gotta think about it. Walt Disney World is a big, it's a big thing. It's a big company, lots of cast members, lots of different costumes. So that is a lot of laundry and that, that just blows my mind. That's crazy. Another crazy one is that you could fit Disneyland, like all of Disneyland, into the Magic Kingdom's parking lot and still have room to park another 500 cars. So I know I made a video before about like Disneyland versus Disney World and that just goes to show you how much bigger Disney World is compared to Disneyland. That you could fit all of Disneyland, now this isn't including California Adventure, but Disneyland into Magic Kingdom's parking lot. That's how big just parking, the parking lot for Magic Kingdom is. This is a tip for parades. So obviously you wanna to get to parades really, really early and sometimes afternoon parades are right around lunchtime. So instead of wasting maybe 30, 40 minutes to eat lunch and then sitting and waiting for the parade, have your family find a spot for the parade and then send one or two members of your group to go get food and eat while you wait for the parade because then you're killing two birds with one stone and that can make about 40 minutes tops for waiting for the parade and eating. So it's definitely helpful when you have jam-packed days, especially in Magic Kingdom. So this is a tip for after the parades. Once the parades are done and you're ready to head off for some rides, head the opposite direction. It might be kind of challenging to get through the crowds, but if you head the opposite way, rides over there, like Jungle Cruise, are gonna have smaller wait times because everybody is going with traffic versus against it. So behind the castle, there is a statue of Cinderella. And if you bend down, there is a crown above her head. And when you bend down, it actually looks like it is resting on her head. So that's pretty interesting. I actually went to that fountain, but I did not do that. So I, didn't, I don't know for sure, but that is what they say. So when you're walking down Main Street and looking at the castle, pay close attention because you might notice that the bricks on the castle actually get smaller. And the reasoning for this is because if all the bricks were the same size, the castle wouldn't look as tall. Whereas it's a thing called forced perspective that they used and basically as the bricks get smaller, it makes it seem like the castle is taller than it actually is. And part of that is due to height regulation. They built the tower or the castle as tall as they possibly could because there is a limit. I want to say it might be 70 feet. Once something reaches a certain like height, you have to actually have a light on it for air, air traffic control reasons. And they built it one inch shorter so they could leave it the way it was without having a distracting light because that kind of takes away the magic. So that's very interesting. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of the scenting pipes, but Magic Kingdom actually down Main Street has scenting pipes and they push out scents such as peppermint during the holidays and sweets and goods to actually pull you into the stores. So they are tricking your mind and your nose. This next one has to do with illuminations. Now I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen illuminations, but in the middle of illuminations there is a giant globe that kind of comes through the canal and into the middle of the lake. Well, that was kind of a problem and you might notice some scratches because there is only six inches on each side of the globe to make it through the canal. So definitely no room for error and there are a few scratches because of it. So the only bathrooms available in Liberty Square are at the Liberty Tavern and the Harbor House and that is because Disney really wanted to stay true to that colonial time period so obviously there weren't bathrooms 
the typical type of bathroom we have now. So in order to keep up with everything, they just kind of did away with bathrooms, except for in those two restaurants. This next one is very interesting, and I'd never heard this before, but apparently when building Tower of Terror, many of the Imagineers like to mess with each other, so they would hide jars of pickled sausages, and right before the day where everything started to get glued in and glued to the floor, a jar was left there with the pickled sausages and it actually got glued to the floor and it still remains there. Now I'm sure the pickled sausages are probably not still in there. Can't confirm that they might be, but definitely the jar itself is still there. So that's pretty interesting. This next one isn't very surprising. I didn't know it, but it's not very surprising. And it's that Jungle Cruise actually has many animatronics that were kind of borrowed from other places like living with the land and things like that. And there is a scene where there's a man climbing a pole and he is getting bumped in the butt by a rhino and the same looking animatronic is actually modeled after the one in Haunted Mansion. The guy who is sitting with a dog and has his little lantern and his legs are shaking so that's pretty interesting. This one blew my mind. I don't know why because it makes sense but this is my favorite secret that I learned and it is that Although we think of Indiana Jones and Dinosaur, aka my favorite rides, are very similar, the tracks are actually identical. They are the same tracks for each ride, which is pretty cool and I did not realize that at all, but it definitely makes sense. And the last one I have for you today is about Magic Kingdom and the flooring, I guess you could say, the streets. So the streets kind of change color and that's due to at nighttime sometimes it's hard to see so they made it that way to subconsciously guide you and there is actually a brown section in liberty square and it is supposed to kind of be representing waste because back in the old day you would throw the waste out the window and then you suddenly have this trail of waste that just went down the street and that is what that is supposed to represent so it's definitely not the most pleasant thing but <laughs> definitely a cool thing to know. Well that is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys next week.